Hi, I'm Kevin Bulmer for NoScheduleman.com, and my question for you today is, does happily ever after really exist? Is it possible to arrive at a point in your life where, from that moment forward, you feel a fairly consistent level of contentment, you're happy most of the time, whether you've got a relationship partner in your life or not, but you're experiencing periods of joy on a fairly regular basis and feel pretty darn good about how your life is. Can that actually happen? My answer to that is, yeah, I think it can. It's just it takes work because the follow-up question to that is, does that happen as a result of anything external? Somebody coming into your life, an event happening, or anything that goes on that taps you on the shoulder and suggests that, all right, from this point forward, everything's good. <laughs> You're done. Have fun. Happily ever after. No. I don't think it works that way, except those aren't the stories that we're being told in the movies that we watch and the films that we, or the films, the films are the movies, right, and the books that we're reading. And I think that the reason why that that is is because we don't want to hear it. We don't want to see it because it takes work. So in my opinion, that's why the credits roll right after the prince and the princess come together and then everything's happily ever after after that. Well, first of all, for me personally, I think it's a little bit dangerous when you thinking that you have to attach any kind of a label to yourself, whether it's prince or princess or manager or CEO or doctor or anything like that, the first work that I think you want to do is just being good with who you are and learn to love yourself. That's step one. Second is you don't want to look for anything external, be it a relationship or some event or some substance or some food or some activity to fill up that hole that's maybe inside of you because you haven't done the first part of the work. But that having been said, I don't want to be so cynical as to think, well, can't two people come together and live happy? ever after. Yeah, I think. Sure they can. You just have to work at it. We're just not thinking that way because we don't see, see those stories all the time. I'll give you an example of happily ever after and how it could maybe look a little bit different. Take Beauty and the Beast. Okay, So Belle is the, the beauty, the beast is the beast. He has some spell on him which turns him into this hairy dude. Uh, there's a whole bunch of drama. Uh, they get together, they fall in love, and then he turns into a really good looking guy. But I'll give him credit, they did fall in love with each other while he was still a pretty hairy looking dude. Now, I would have probably enjoyed the ending of that film more if he had stayed that way, but I can appreciate the metaphor of how you can only really have a transformation after you learn to embrace who and what you already are and what you, you already have. So I'm good with that. But let's just suppose for a second that he did stay the beast. What's the story that maybe that we do need to see that we can really learn from in our lives? Let's suppose there's a sequel to that movie and it comes about five or six years later after that guy's back into the hairy beast, okay? So <laughs> after the credits roll, there's been a lot less ballroom dancing with the uh, talking candlestick and the singing clock doing the um, singing about who's coming to dinner and a lot more wiping of noses, cleaning of diapers, and arguing over who's going to be the next to sell the box of chocolates that came home as the school fundraiser because now there's a little beast and a little beastette which means that Beauty and the Beast have a lot less time to be dancing in the ballroom let alone doing anything else so it's all Belle can do to fight to find time to keep reading all those books that she liked remember how she used to skip around with a basket full of them well now they're all over the castle and they're piling up and the beast mutters under his breath as he keeps tripping over them that irritates him and every single time he goes by one and one knocks into his knee he grinds them a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. Well, Belle, she needs to have time for herself because these kids keep needing so much attention, especially with all that hair. Can you imagine? So she goes out to her book club meeting and the Beast says, well, fine, I've got needs too. I'm going to have my buddies Chewbacca and Bigfoot over for a poker night. So they get Mrs. Teapot to look after the kids. So by the time Belle comes back, she's disgusted to find that her rec room is a smoky mess from the Beast and his hairy buddies. She says in a huff, whatever, just have a nice time for the rest of the evening with your friends. Ask Mrs. Teapot to put the little beasts to bed. She goes up to have a shower and decompress, only to find a whole bunch of beast hair in the shower drain and big beast toenail clippings all over the sink. So then she calls down for him to come up because she wants to show him this and have a little discussion about it. He huffs and leaves his buddies in the poker room, goes up getting ready to be able to have a conversation with his wife, and they're just about to talk about how they are feeling about things and what they can do about it, and one of the kids starts screaming and they've got to go over and attend to that. How's that sound? Happily ever after? Let me tell you what that is. That's called life. That's reality. So that's a story as much of an exaggeration as it is. I'm having fun, but if you have been through a family situation, you know it can be difficult. So how does happily ever after ever exist? You gotta work at it. You gotta feel good about yourself, not looking for something else external to fill that void. That's an inside job. Only you can do that. 
and as far as your partner or anybody else in your life, your kids, to focus on the things that you do appreciate, that you are grateful for. And you'll see more of that. And then communicate openly. And maybe make it a priority to seek out some resources of how to be able to do that, as opposed to just feeding more into your consciousness about, well, it's supposed to live, be happily ever after, and it doesn't feel like that for me, so I must be doing something wrong, so it must be him, or it must be her, or it must be this, or it must be that, so the solution is I'll just go out and get a new one of those and then everything will be fine after that. Instead, try making love a verb, like Stephen Covey describes in his terrific book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Go look that one up, where he talks about how Love needs to be something that you do if you want to feel it. Make it a verb. Do it. The more you do it, the more you're going to feel it. And you can live happily ever after, too. Agree? Disagree? Let me know your thoughts. Subscribe and leave me a comment. Love to hear from you. I'm Kevin Bulmer for NoScheduleman.com.